This divisive type of programming has the habit of catching stars at their worst and most uncomfortable. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most awkward reality TV moments. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at some of the most awkward and hilarious things ever captured on reality television. We're defining reality TV as shows that document unscripted events and or follow its subjects' personal lives. Game shows and news fails won't be included, as those generally aren't considered reality TV. Number 10. Welcome to the hood, keeping up with the Kardashians. Hey, How you how's it going? What's up, my name Who is Realist. Hi, Realist. Chris isn't like a regular mom, she's a cool mom. When some neighbors come a knocking to say hi, Chris Jenner tries to be as welcoming as possible. Just well, welcome to the hood. Okay, uh, Chris, we might have some notes for next time. Being the hospitable woman she is, Chris of course brings them inside for milk and cookies and vodka? Sure. After finding out that the men she's brought in are rappers, Chris decides to turn the tunes on. <laughs> The sunglasses and long chains come on, and soon we're treated to exactly what we thought Kris Jenner rapping would sound like. This ain't no Luther Vandross! <laughs> Number 9. Baby Madonna, Toddlers and Tiaras You're so smart, Mia! To be honest, we could probably put every episode and segment of Toddlers and Tiaras on this list, but arguably no moment was more controversial than Baby Madonna. Uh The Madonna impersonator in question is Mia, a two-year-old beauty pageant competitor. These contests are problematic enough as is, but her outfit is even more egregious. A gold bustier complete with cone breasts modeled after sex icon Madonna. <laughs> you know, the outfit she wore while she famously feigned touching herself during the Blonde Ambition tour? It's not something you ever put a two-year-old in, and it was met with fierce backlash by the mainstream media. This was not just awkward, it was reprehensible. Mia probably has been in about 20 pageants or so. I'd say out of those 20, she has won about 18 or so. Usually she always comes home with a crown. Number 8. Snooki is punched in the face, Jersey Shore. Snooki being punched directly in the face is now reality TV history, and it's every bit as iconic and awkward today as it was back in 2009. It's not for you! In the show's first season, Snooki was brutally punched in the face by high school teacher Brad Farrow, who was later fired from his position at Queens Community High School. The punch itself was widely shared across the internet and made Snooki a national celebrity. MTV later pulled the footage and called it, quote, extremely disturbing, but not before it had used the punch in promos and made Jersey Shore and Snooki household names. Funny how that works, huh? Number 7. Go Big or Go Home – Vanderpump Rules I'm actually so excited about massaging my boobs afterwards. <laughs> oh yeah, because you have to massage the, yeah. Put on my face. Reality TV usually centers on an egocentric cast, but rarely are the stars as overtly vain and shallow as this. In the fourth season of Vanderpump Rules, Jax admitted that he was falling back into bad habits. To perk himself up, he convinces his girlfriend Brittany to get a full D breast enlargement. Wait, how big are you She's gonna getting triple go? Ds. A full C, small D. I'm not yeah. being inappropriate, but we discussed we like Sarah. While she was considering a C cup, Jax managed to convince her to go bigger, telling her in an incredibly obnoxious manner, it's not just for you, it's for me. If I'm gonna help finance this, I want them how I want them. Worse, he later complained about helping her after the surgery, calling his help, quote, serious boyfriend duty. It made for really awkward TV, and it just made us feel bad for poor Britney. Listen, I don't want porn star boobs. I don't like that. Natural teardrop, naturalness. Number 6. Aviva takes off her prosthetic leg, the Real Housewives of New York City. I find it, I find it very, very, very hurtful that you don't believe that I have asthma. This show is full of ridiculous and childish behavior, but this is on another level. After Aviva's co-stars accused her of embellishing her asthma, Aviva responded in the intelligent and mature way of slamming her prosthetic leg on the table. The only thing that is artificial or fake about me 
this. Everyone was understandably shocked. It's a weird move. However, it seems as if Aviva was fully aware of how inappropriate the action was, as she later told HuffPost Live that she did it for the drama. Everything else is real. Everything else. Everything else is real. In her own words, quote, Would I ever do that in real life? No. But there were several cameras around me, and was I thinking about making a show and being entertaining? Yes, absolutely. Here. Go ahead. Go ahead, Heather. Take it. Oh my God. <laughs> Number 5. Asia's Butterfly Fail RuPaul's Drag Race <laughs> If you're gonna attempt some dramatic flourish on stage, best to make sure it actually works before the big moment. On the season 10 finale of RuPaul's Drag Race, Asia had planned to release some butterflies from her chest and wrist compartments during her lip sync in a quote, amazing display of optimism. I don't need nothing. <laughs> Unfortunately, the butterflies were feeling a little lazy that day. Most of them simply stayed put in their little compartment, while others just fell to the floor after Asia forced them out. The horrified and hilarious reactions from the audience say it all. This fail instantly became a meme, and Asia was rightfully eliminated from the competition, placing fourth. Number 4. Tiffany vs. Tyra – America's Next Top Model Is there anything more awkward than watching two people scream at each other? Well, in this case it's one person screaming while the other sheepishly takes it, but the point still stands. Be quiet! That's what is wrong with you! To hit, but you're Stop not it! I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this! After Tiffany was eliminated from the fourth cycle, Tyra criticized her seemingly careless attitude and for treating the competition like a joke. I was rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! How dare you! Learn something from this! And when Tiffany fought back by explaining her side, Tyra exploded in a scene right out of an Oscar-winning drama, complete with tear-choked lines like, quote, I was rooting for you, and, quote, you take responsibility for yourself. We never saw Tyra explode like this, and it made for really uncomfortable viewing. You roll in your eyes and you act like this because you've heard it all before. You've heard it all before. You don't know where the hell I come from. You have no idea what I've been through. But I'm not a victim. I grow from it and I learn. Number 3. Why Muhammad Has Stopped Having Sex With Danielle, 90 Day Fiance Was there any intimacy after the wedding at all? After the wedding? Yes. There was, but... We started facing a problem. You see, this is what's wrong with reality TV. Sure, we've had some fun before this, but the idea of cameras capturing such a personal and intimate conversation like this is just wrong. It makes us feel voyeuristic and dirty. Here we see Muhammad and Danielle talking about their sex life, or lack thereof, and how Danielle threatened to have Muhammad deported if he didn't sleep with her. She was, like, be like, sitting on the floor, crying, Screaming in front of her teenagers, I want my sex tonight. If you don't give me my sex tonight, I will, I will, I will call the immigration, I will get you deported. Danielle further explains that Muhammad has told people that she smells, she does, says Muhammad, and that she's, quote, peed on him, prompting many bewildered looks. Everyone is clearly uncomfortable talking about this, and we are just as uncomfortable watching it. He has told people that I smell and I do. peed on him. <gasps> Number 2. Josh and Emily's Kiss – Love at First Kiss I'm Josh, I'm 27. No pressure. And today I'm going to kiss a girl for the first time. <sighs> Many of us have experienced awkward first kisses, but the next time you're lying awake and thinking about your god-awful first romantic impression, take comfort in knowing that it couldn't have been any worse than Josh's. Hi. Hello. Hey. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. The whole concept of this show is having complete strangers kiss each other and seeing if anything sparks. Nothing sparked between Josh and Emily. Imagine that. We watched in horror as inexperienced kisser Josh approached Emily with a really creepy and uncomfortable smile before lightly smooching her cheek, weirdly embracing her, and walking away. We're forced to watch this through our fingers because this is just too much. Anyone who didn't physically recoil from this wins one Ms. Mojo point. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. Is this chicken what I have or is this fish? I know it's tuna, but it, it says chicken by the sea. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> because for a woman, your tootsie nudes, I mean, you know, your biscuit, I mean, your private area genitalia for a female, I mean, it just, 
Charge me like a okay, she's Actually, gone. I can talk the shit yeah, out of you. Do I'm it! Gone. Slap me, bitch! What? Number one, Jason dumps Melissa, The Bachelor. You know, I came here to find, in my whole life, find somebody like Melissa. Mm -hmm. And since this all ended, <sighs> things have been different. Well, you don't see this every day on The Bachelor, that's for sure. Though it was shot a month and a half after the filming of the main episodes, the After the Final Rose special aired right after the season finale was broadcast. Are you going to end this tonight? I have to. Let's bring her out. It followed Jason as he dumped winner Melissa to get with Molly. This is another instance of cameras capturing a moment of incredible intimacy, and it again made us feel terrible for gobbling it up as entertainment. You're such a bastard. I wish more than anything that last day you would have just let me go instead of doing this to me. I'm so mad at you. How would you feel if your fiance dumped you on national television in front of about 15 million people? Luckily, everything worked out for Melissa, as she married Ty Strickland and had three children with him. But in the moment, our hearts were shattered for the poor woman. Melissa was out here earlier, and um, I ended things with her because I haven't been able to stop thinking about you. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.